Alrighty, we are starting the stream. This is kind of just random, um, but we're going to be talking about uh, the the whole offer or bid that SeaWorld put in for Cedar Fair. Very interesting time. Skylar the Fan Collector, welcome. Thanks for joining. This is kind of a a random I know I said yesterday if anybody wanted to have a live stream but I didn't come as prepared so this is more gonna be just us chatting about the recent news with Cedar Fair and SeaWorld I'm gonna wait a couple moments because I didn't really announce it that what time this was gonna be so while we're on here feel free to ask some questions and whatnot I'm just doing some research on the topic I mean I've done a little bit of research but Wow looks like a lot of you guys are jumping in sorry I didn't I didn't have the screen open Hi, Jack O'Lantern Studios. Brittany Phillips, welcome back. T -t -t Avalanche is coming back as Reptilian. Yay. Yes, they are. <laughs> but will it be coming back as a Cedar Fair Park? That's the question. Well, I don't think the whole bit is going to happen that, that quickly. But it is interesting. Very interesting. Hey, Cody. Have you heard rumors about Dark Castle? Yeah, I've heard about... Um, Dark Coaster is the nickname that's going on with Dark Castle right now at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. It looks like it's going to be an indoor roller coaster. A very small indoor roller coaster that is going to do the rounds around the track twice and there's going to be like a switch track. I want to do a video about that. I just haven't got around to doing all the research necessary to do the, the video for Dark Coaster, the replacement of Dark Castle, but it does sound like a very legitimate um, possibility they're making it into indoor coaster yep da, da, da. amazing adventures this is very exciting which part what we were just talking about or talking about the potential of Cedar Fair being sold to SeaWorld let me see I think my left side's a little dark I don't have my regular lighting set up kind of did this on a quick whim so hold on really quick <sighs> okay I think that's a little bit better my hair's all messed up forgive me <clears throat> wonder if SeaWorld would be keep would be would keep King's Dominion around I mean I don't see why not that's just me guessing. I, I mean, I don't even think they would close any of the parks. I think uh, SeaWorld and and uh, Cedar Point or Cedar Fair, sorry, uh, going together would make them one of the largest chains of parks in the U.S., if not the world. I think SeaWorld has 11 parks or something like that, and Cedar Fair has around like 20-something parks. So it would be a pretty big merger. Cedar Fair possibly being sold to SeaWorld. Okay. All right. So that being said, this is probably going to be a really quick live stream. Just came on really to chat with you guys about this. This is just a topic that is going on recently, but really it was more just to get on and chat with you guys. A couple people had asked me when I would be going live again because they weren't able to join the last live. So here we are. I didn't prepare too well like I did for the, for the last live stream. Been kind of busy, but I wanted to get on regardless Got home a little bit late as well, um, but I wanted to get on regardless, chat with you guys for a little bit, and talk about this particular topic that I find interesting, and I think a lot of you guys will as well. Cody, I feel like that would be too much to maintain for SeaWorld. I mean, it is a large project, and very they have very ambitious 
um, intentions behind this. I don't know what or where this came from, but I don't know. I, I feel like King's Dominion last year was amazing. I would hate to see King's Dominion go. I don't think that's the case. I mean, I didn't even think about that. I'm sure SeaWorld may close some of the parks, but why? I, I, I guess that's a possibility, but why? Sometimes when companies merge together, people lose their jobs. That is undoubtedly true. When companies merge, people lose their jobs. But typically it's the higher ups. Um, unless one of the parks is closed and it could be everybody. But um, I, I've been a part of some mergers in the past. And typically the, the people in the highest positions are the ones that are let go because the new incoming company has people in those positions already. So like CEOs, CFOs. Um, and they're not really let go. They're just in part of the merger. Those guys take their money and go while the employees of the company, whatever they be, you know, a cashier, a teller or anything like that, they're not as impacted because they're purchasing locations and they still need employees for those locations. I had a great time at King's Dominion in October. So did I. King's Dominion was amazing. One of the questions is what are they going to end up changing it to? So like Cedar Point. Is it going to be SeaWorld Point? I think that would be kind of cool if they kept the name partially like that. And I mean, I, I think out of all the parks, I, I would assume, and obviously this is just my opinion, that Cedar Point would be safe because it's, it's a historic uh, park. It's like the roller coaster um, capital of the, of the world, probably. And then King's Dominion has some of the best coasters that or two of the best coasters, that, that's not say some, but two of the best coasters that uh, Cedar Fair has to offer. They have Intimidator 305 and they have uh, tw Twisted Timbers. <laughs> I was about to say something else, but those two rides are amazing. I Seeing that park get closed down and those parks going to, or those rides going to waste would be terrible. All right, so let's pull up one of these articles. I'm going to pull up the CNBC article on this. So, and I'm just going to, as you guys know, I'm not great at reading aloud, but I'll go over some of the points that I see on here. So first and foremost, the biggest point is that the bid that they put on the park was $3.4 billion. $3.4 billion. Who has that type of money besides like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? But as a corporation, I guess it makes more sense that they have that much money with all the parts that they have. Um, but you know... I honestly, I would think that this purchase would be going backwards. I would think it would be Cedar Fair purchasing SeaWorld. That's just me. I, I, I don't think, I wouldn't assume that SeaWorld is better and bigger than Cedar Fair. I feel like Cedar Fair has many, many more parks. And I don't know how it came to be that it's in this direction in particular. Um, let's see. But I feel like SeaWorld would improve King's Dominion a lot. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I think King's Dominion being taken over by SeaWorld may mean that on top of the theming that they're already adding with the new Jungle Expedition, the park would get a lot more theming because at least... I haven't been to the Sea or the Bush Gardens over in Tampa in a really long time, so I can't speak to that particular park but the one over here in Virginia uh, Williamsburg is a very cool and themed park but if I had to say and this is probably the first time that I'll say this aloud to anybody is Haunt was better than Hollow Scream so King's Minions Haunt better than Hollow Scream and I won't repeat that again <laughs> da, 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 da. Amazing Adventures I need to get down to Busch Gardens Williamsburg either this month or next month. I went I went to the Christmas town the day after Christmas, had a great time. It was my first time at Christmas Town. Yeah, Christmas Town is a great event. And now that they have their Mardi Gras going on, that is a really cool event. Probably my second or third favorite time at the park, but very notably so one of my favorite times at the park. Let's see, so Cedar Fair confirms Tuesday that it had 
received a unsolicited proposal for SeaWorld Entertainment. Oh, from SeaWorld Entertainment. Now, one key word on there is unsolicited proposal, which means they were not reaching out or asking for this. Unsolicited means that this was somebody coming out and making an offer that wasn't out there. They basically are generating a scenario that the receiver didn't intend or wasn't thinking of at the time. And then the company has the company says that it received a bid which is reportedly worth 3.4 billion dollars. Now, um, one thing I was thinking about is Cedar Fair making this public almost makes them more valuable. And that being said, if you check like all investment apps, I, I'm on Robinhood and a cup a couple others. That day, SeaWorld went down. Cedar Fair went up significantly um if you were holding cedar fair which is the the acronym for cedar fair on um the stock market is fun f-u-n their stock went up significantly if you were holding them and you had a decent share you probably came out pretty well which i thought was counterintuitive if SeaWorld is purchasing cedar fair then the stock for SeaWorld should go up but i guess not but maybe this is all just a clever move by Cedar Fair because, once again, I don't see why they would be selling. Let's see. Cody. I'm a Bush Gardens past member and only have been to King's Dominion once and it was during Haunt. And comparing to Haunt to Hollow Scream, I feel like Haunt is scarier. I would agree with you, Cody. And if you're a Bush Gardens annual pass holder and you live close enough to King's Dominion, I would also consider becoming a King's Dominion pass holder. Um, I was a gold member and then I switched over to platinum so I could visit some other parks. I went to Cedar Fair last year and vlogged it and I had intentions of visiting some other parks but didn't. But still, it, it paid for itself because I went to King's Dominion so many times. But their passes are a bang for their buck beyond belief. I think if you purchase them right at the end of the year, typically the gold pass is $89 and that's for the whole entire year access to all their special events super cool all right cedar fair opened tuesday at 50 dollars per share and rose 54 dollars before trading halted for news see and that the trading they actually had to come in and halt it because the the stock was actually going so high so quick so not sure what's going on here let's see if we could read some other little details cedar fair said tuesday that it was reviewing an unsolicited proposal it received from sea world entertainment to buy out the company bloomberg which is the first to report the news said the offer was worth 3.4 billion the news sent shares of of the theme park of the theme park owner up 10 percent before trading was halted so um if you guys don't invest uh if any particular company starts to skyrocket in, just in order to maintain the market and make sure that something crazy doesn't happen, they halt the purchasing and selling. And sometimes they only halt the, the purchasing of the, the stock, and that's what happened. This was doing so well, uh, Cedar Fair stock was going up so quickly they had to halt it. When trading resumed, Cedar Fair stock rose more than 15% and hit its 52-week high at 57.55 cents. That's crazy. You have to think about that in increments like of how many pieces you have. So let's say you have 100 pieces or 100 pieces of stock of Cedar Fair and it started at 50, then it went up $7.55. That's $7.55 times what I say? Oh, times 100. He has 100 shares. So $7.55. Let's say you did have 100 shares, right? How much would you have made that day? So 7.55. I'm not great at math, so you would have made $755. I should have known that. That's easy math. Right as I saw the answer, I was like, Jesus. And it's all on video, live. But yeah, you would have made $755 that day if you had 100 shares of Cedar Fair. Crazy. Let's see. I only live like half an hour away from Bush Gardens. Yeah, 
I live like two and a half hours away from Bush Gardens, but I have annual passes for both of them. I do frequent both of them a lot, obviously because the channel, um, but also I do love going to those parks and enjoying the events that they have. I'm thinking about going to Mardi Gras event. Is it worth it? I personally think it's worth it, but I also do personally enjoy going to the parks and doing very little. Like I could go to the park, vlog, not ride anything. All I did was see and enjoy the atmosphere and I'm good. If you watch some of my vlogs and it looks like I didn't ride any rides, there's a good chance that I actually didn't ride a ride. But I also am an annual pass holder, so if it's busy, I'm spoiled. I'm not going to wait in a line. Let's see. In the press, Cedar, Cedar Fair didn't disclose details of the SeaWorld proposal. The company said it is consulting with legal and financial advisors about the offer. Cedar Fair is one of the largest regional theme parks in operation in the world. With a market cap of $2.8 billion, for comparison, SeaWorld has a market cap of $4.6 billion. Okay, so SeaWorld is definitely a larger company. $4.6 billion compared to $2.82 Oh, I didn't know this. So Cedar Fair has 11 hotels and two sports complexes. <laughs> Kevin, wonder if they're testing the waters with people's reactions. When I was a kid, Kings Dominion had a Hanna-Barbera Flintstones theme. Now they have Snoopy and Coke. Wonder if the theme would change i think absolutely the 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 theme would change for sure because that's what happened so um king's dominion was owned by paramount i don't know if you guys remember that so it used to be called paramount's king's dominion um and then came in um cedar fair and purchased them out so i, I think the theming would change oh and the that theming from from uh, Hanna Barbera and all that stuff to, to because um, they used to have also I believe uh, Scooby Doo, and then they changed that as well. So and it was all due to the purchase of Cedar Fair and Cedar Fair came in and also closed the Volcano, um, and a couple other rides which now they're replacing. So Cedar Fair is actively investing in their parks. So I I, I didn't see any sign of them considering selling but i guess if somebody makes you an offer it'd be stupid not to consider that offer and even more so given that the offer is above your current market cap valuation hmm. just reading over this a little bit more and also, uh, for those who don't know, Bush Gardens used to be owned by Anheuser Busch. Yes, the beer company. Um, and then SeaWorld came in and purchased them. So at the park, you used to be able to see the the actual like Clydesdales from the um, what's the beer. Um, Anheuser-Busch. What is it? Oh, I hate when, I, when this happens. I forget the name of something as I'm drinking a beer too, but... Mm, what is it? It is... Bud Light. There we go. Bud. Bud Budweiser from Anheuser-Busch. They used to have their Clydesdales there at Busch Gardens. Still looking through this. Cedar Fair is one of the largest. Da, 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 da. Both SeaWorld and Cedar Fair, like others in amusement industry, were hit hard by the pandemic in 2019. Cedar Fair averaged around $50 per share. There's a lot of like stock talk. There hasn't been much talk about it since this news popped, so maybe you're right. Maybe they're just testing the waters. Let's see what USA Today 
says they're talking about it being a win-win proposition so um, I, I think what they're trying to insinuate is Bush Gardens or SeaWorld would end up growing their their park map or their spread of parks while um, Cedar Fair would make out with a lot of money. You know, this person right here, I I don't know how to pronounce pronounce your screen name but you just said a comment and the lettering on your screen name is a little different you said vomred i don't know what that means i apologize uh, but you were on the live last time and we weren't able to communicate let's see kevin i remember that as well we could tour the bush garden plant and get a free sample oh i never got to to tour it back then but that sounds super cool. <laughs> this article starts off funny. Looking to make a bigger splash than a killer whale in a bathtub? SeaWorld Entertainment reportedly made a $3.4 billion offer to snap up regional amusement park operator Cedar Fair this week. Bloomberg broke the story and Cedar Fair is reportedly studying the unsolicited all cash offer. All cash offer? What? That's, I mean, I know the size of these companies is undoubtedly much larger than my wallet, but just to think that they're doing an all cash offer. That's some liquidity right there. Let's see. Brittany Phillips SeaWorld could be trying to get away from their black blackfish problem. I, I hear you there. But I feel like the whole um, Blackfish um, documentary, I mean, that was so long ago. What was, I think I was like in high school. I feel like they've done a decent recovery um, and maintained themselves. They own a large assortment of parks and in the theme park capital, which is Orlando, um, they have water parks, they have uh, SeaWorld, they have Bush Gardens, um, they have SeaWorld in San Antonio, SeaWorld um, in California. So, I don't know, I think that they've recovered from that well and kind of, to a degree, put that in the past. I know people haven't forgot for good reason, um, but I don't know that that's the, the motivation behind purchasing Cedar Fair, but it can be, it can be. What's Blackfish? Um, it's Cody. I don't know how how young you are, Cody, but um, what's that got to be like? Maybe like fifteen years ago, a documentary came out talking about the treatment of killer whales and wild oceanic animals in um, or at Sea World, and it was not good for them. It was a very negative showing but that was a long time ago and i i think they've made large changes I, I believe that that documentary is still available to watch i i remember that documentary and i remember the documentary of supersize me cody do you do you know the supersize me documentary and for whoever's tuning in right now we are not talking supersize me documentary we literally just brought that up right now we're chatting catching up and talking about um the purchase or the bid to purchase cedar fair by sea world the 3.4 billion dollar offer that was unsolicited but being considered by cedar fair as it is an all cash offer they're currently seeking advice from their legal it's cody so uh supersize me <laughs> it's funny that you don't know what that is so a long time ago, probably around 15, maybe more years ago, uh, McDonald's, when you would order food from them, they would always say, would you like your order supersized? And what that would do, it, was make, it would make everything, your fries huge, your drink huge. Um, and then a documentary came out about how unhealthy that actually was. And um, basically, McDonald's had to stop asking people if they wanted their order supersized. I don't think supersized even exists anymore. 
Um, it was a very, very successful marketing tactic for them because I remember myself supersizing items. Um, but yeah, after that documentary came out, I think um, somebody ate McDonald's supersized meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for like a month. And at the end of the month, the, a doctor advised him that he had to stop or he would potentially die. That's how bad it got in just a month. <clears throat> All right, Kevin, what would really help King's Dominion is adding other ac attractions nearby, motels, restaurants, etc. Yeah, King's Dominion, um, as far as like what's around them, um, are kind of hurting because I think the the closest hotel is condemned and vacant, um, which is the one right next to the parking lot that you see when you drive into King's Dominion. Um, but regardless, you know, from what's around them. I think King's Dominion has been doing a great job and has been holding their own very well, at least since reopening. All their events were spectacular. Their their uh, Winterfest was a spectacle to see. They did amazing with the lighting and their their um, their media events have been amazing. They've gone above and beyond um, for welcoming their creators and whoever else goes to the media events well obviously media members um their halloween haunt their houses where chefs kiss beautiful unfortunately they only had five but that was because of staff shortages and other things um due to the pandemic but those five were spectacular, so when they get back to like nine or ten, oh man, oh man, that, that event's going to be a killer event. It's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Brittany Phillips, 18 years I think. 18 years since Blackfish and or Super Size Me documentary. Both interesting documentaries. They don't I feel like they don't do things like that anymore or just now documentaries are so readily available that it's not as impactful when one comes out like those did all right let's look a little bit more into this oh another thing um i saw a video recently posted today posted today um it looks like the first people to ride pantheon have ridden pantheon that's one thing SeaWorld does have. They have some crazy, crazy coasters opening this year. Iron Gwazi and Pantheon alone are very, very attractive coasters that I can't wait to check out. Pantheon first, obviously, for myself. Okay, so in this article, it doesn't seem like a plausible deal on the surface. Didn't Cedar Fair rebuff rebuff advance when advances when rival Six Flag Entertainment reportedly made a stock and cash offer valued at four billion dollars? So it looks like Six Flags made a offer to Cedar Fair back in 2019 for four billion dollars. Why would Cedar Fair? settle for less that does that does make sense i did not know that i did not know that six flags had made an offer on cedar fair in 2019 for four billion dollars and now sea world is coming in and offering them 3.4 billion why is it that six flags takes out cedar fair at 70 dollars a share didn't make sense but Somehow, I perfectly find that SeaWorld steps up with an exit strategy for the same investor, roughly at $60 a share. The late 2019 was. Hmm. I did not know that they had another deal on the table just a while ago. Let's see. All right, it doesn't look like there's much out there 
in the form of information on this. I may end up trying to make a video about this, um, but that will take a good amount of research because it doesn't look like there's a ton aside from them talking about the fact that there is an offer out. So I'm going to close that out. Let's just chat for a little bit, guys, before we end this live stream. Um, last live stream was obviously a lot more prepared. Um, I ended up ch uh, cutting down that, that live stream and turning it into an actual video. Not sure if any of you guys watched the video that came from the live stream, but I turned it into like one of my regular videos with intro and outro and all that. Um, did anybody end up watching that? Did you guys enjoy that? that style um, I, I thought it would be pretty cool to do a live stream and then for those of you who like short form content and just want the actual details instead of all the chatting and everything I cut out all the chats and questions and just broke it down and cut it down to like a 17 minute video from an hour and a half so that those who just wanted the info could watch Did anybody watch that Oh, by the way, keep an eye out. We'll be headed to Sir Henry's again for their Valentine's Day event. This was last year, 2021. We went to Sir Henry's for the first time, checked out their Valentine's, Valentine's Day event. Next week, from the 10th to the 15th, we'll be back in Orlando, Monique and myself, and we'll be checking out the theme parks, um, probably doing some Valentine's Day vlogs, and checking out Sir Henry's Haunted Trail. Cody, you did? Daniel Kaiser. Oh, I didn't see you on here. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, so I just thought it would be a cool idea to, you know, have a live stream that is going over some good bits and pieces of info and then, you know, chatting at the same time with you guys. And then I cut that down, edited it down from a, an hour and a half to 17 minutes of just the information. And I had a good time editing that. That, that was a little tough to edit down an hour and a half, but... I wanted to see what you guys thought. Um, Brittany, hopefully, hopefully this weekend, the last couple weekends have either been snowed out or they've been closed or it's been super, super cold. Um, it is warming up. Today is much better outside. I could actually go outside with a light sweater and it's tolerable. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty cold, which is the reason why I haven't made my way out there. Um, but hopefully this weekend. I also thought, you know, if I did make my way out there and it was super cold, because I have gone out there and done a couple really cold vlogs, the the characters and, and all the performers wouldn't be out because of the temperature. Daniel Kaiser. I'm going to be opening Saturday. I, I'm going to the opening Saturday for to Kings Dominion. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, you want to go check out the, the new area, Jungle Expedition and Tomb Billy? And also... Reptilian, the all-new themed coaster for replacing Avalanche in theming, basically. You're still going to have a bobsled coaster. Alrighty, guys. Oh, wait. Kevin? Have you ever covered Epcot? I have not covered Epcot. So I've covered Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Magic Kingdom. It's been a really long time since I've been to Epcot. Um, but I hope to check check out Hep, uh, Epcot because they have the new um, Ratatouille coaster, which I really, or Ratatouille ride, better said, that I really want to check out. And I believe this year is the 40th anniversary for Epcot, while... Magic Kingdom is still celebrating their 50th anniversary for like God knows how long. So keep keep tuned, Kevin. I will go out there at some point. Um, this coming weekend, I don't have a plan to go check out a Disney park, but who knows? Who knows? There There is a chance. A chance always exists. I, I try to be spontaneous when I can. But I do have some things planned for you guys. Um, for any of you that are like Harry Potter fans or anything... Next weekend for Valentine's, we're going to be at Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure and other parks, which um, I'll be uh, letting you guys see those parks once I post. I, I want to keep some things 
a little secret for you guys to have some nice surprises when I get back from that trip. Um, but the Valentine's Day, so the 14th, we will be going to a different park that we've never been to. And I personally have actually never been to. I've been to Epcot before, but I've never vlogged it. Um, just because I went when I was a child. I've never been as a grown-up or a teenager. Oh, Kevin, I, I think I just answered the question. Yes, I have been to Epcot. Um, but as a child, I was a little kid, so I don't remember it much. And it's it must have changed significantly. But I have been planning to go there this year. But yeah, next week... Universal Studios, this weekend, probably some Bush Gardens for their Mardi Gras. Um, and then on the 10th, we fly out to Orlando, spending a nice uh, Valentine's Day vacation out there with Monique. Probably do a couple of Valentine's Day events, but we're definitely, definitely, definitely going to hit up the parks. I got a couple ideas as far as vlogs to, to film for you guys. Not all Valentine's Day, actually very little Valentine's Day, but a lot of just theme park vlogs that I want to show you guys. If you guys are Potter fans, I am going to try to do some Potter themed um, vlogs, just kind of like, hey, you know, like how to experience Harry Potter world. Not that specifically, but I do have an idea. I don't want to leak it out because then I ruin it for you guys, but it will be Potter themed. Alrighty guys, I think today we're going to cut the stream a little early. It's been 36 minutes and 50 seconds. 52, 53, 54. I'm kidding, I'm not going to count it all out to you. But last time around we were on for an hour and a half. I had a great time talking to you guys, but that was a much more prepared live stream than this one. This one around we're kind of just jumping on to chat a little bit with you guys, talk a little bit about the news. Um, it, there isn't a lot of news around that bid that SeaWorld made for Cedar Fair. Um, but I just did read that Six Flags had made a bigger offer to Cedar Fair back in 2019. But back in 2019, Six Flags was in a better position. Cedar Fair was in a better position. So maybe $4 billion at that time wasn't a big offer. But $3.4 billion now, which is a smaller offer is a little bit more significant because both of them have taken a hit during the pandemic. I wonder if they're going to close the VR ride like the they did Dark Castle. It never opened. What the... Um, escape, es, what is it? Escape from Ire or something like that? Or the Battle for Ire? Um, you know, no tears will be shed if the Battle for Ire never comes back. At least not from me. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to call it. I appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, I'll try to do another live stream next week. I, I got a lot of messages from you guys saying that um, you didn't get to jump on the last live stream. So when, I, when was I going to do my next live stream? I appreciate the, that from you guys. The fact that you want to jump on these live streams. And I, I do it for you guys, the, the the fans that keep coming back. You know, I don't, I don't need a million people on my live stream to, to do these. I, I think just these are more in particular to... The individuals who support me on a regular basis and anybody who wants to ask a question if you're a new subscriber to edutainment you're more than welcome to ask questions in this format i think anybody that jumps on will tell you i do try my best to address everybody's questions and chat openly so once again guys thank you so much for jumping on i'll try to do another one of these next week keep your eyes peeled for some additional content i will say the universal content um, I would love to see, get some, some more backing behind that. So if you guys have a chance, make sure to go check that out. I'll see you guys on the next one. But don't forget to ask yourself, have you been detained?